and we have our next speaker, Marcello Bertotti, who's joined us despite suffering from a migraine. So we are very, very grateful to you for coming along to speak to us today. Marcello is from the University of East London, where he specialises in research that investigates things like social prescribing. And he is actually today going to talk about the connections between social prescribing, mental health and social isolation and loneliness bringing perspectives from a range of disciplines. So Marcello, as you've just joined, just to explain, we've got 10 minutes and I'm going to give you a one minute warning just before the end and then we'll have some time for questions. So over to you, Marcello. Mm. Hi, um, how are everybody? Um, yes, so i will uh, really talking about social prescribing, mental health and social isolation and loneliness today. Um, I, I'll give you a, a brief introduction of what social prescribing is. So. Uh, first of all, uh, to introduce ourselves into what uh, my social prescribing do for, for mental health and social isolation. So is, uh, social prescribing involves uh, empowering individuals to improve their health and well-being uh, and social welfare by connecting them to non-medical and community support services. So in more, more in detail, uh, what it does, you, you, you have a number of people, a group, different groups of people, um, and uh, who, who could be people who experience uh, social isolation, loneliness, uh, or uh, mild to moderate mental health problems. Um, uh, often they could be uh, people who uh, are considered as uh, frequent attenders to primary care, which means basically that they go and see their, their GP quite often. Um, and they do so because uh, they might be socially isolated and lonely in the first place. So. So that, that is the kind of type of people that might uh, go to see uh, the GP. Um, so the GP uh, obviously offers some consultation in GP practices. Uh, obviously, uh, GP consultations in the UK are quite short. Um, uh, we're talking about about 11.2 uh, minutes, uh, I think, uh, in, on average uh, uh, for, for each consultation. So uh, social prescribing has been uh, oh, oh, traditionally uh, about um, um, referring people from the GP to uh, to other to, to a link worker, which I'll talk about in a minute, but um, uh, but I just changed and developed uh, in the last few years. So there are now uh, local authorities, housing associations, and secondary care um, is an example of secondary care hospitals, which uh, uh, also refer a patient to uh, the link worker, uh, which you can see in the photo uh, in the middle here. Um, these are link workers from uh, City and Hackney. Um, and uh, one of the kind of main focus of uh, link workers is um, really uh, focus on what matters to uh, people who are referred from the GP rather than what the, what's matter with them um, or so what, what matters with you. Um, so is the focus is really uh, and putting the person at the center of the process. Um, and uh, this is uh, typically, uh, although there are many different types of social prescribing, um, um, typically they include uh, six sessions. Uh, they are uh, holistic, so they, they're not looking just at health, but also uh, social issues, which might be uh, employment, housing, or others. Um, and also uh, they're non-clinical in focus. So they uh, tend to refer people to uh, activity in the voluntary sector and uh, non-clinical activities in the voluntary sector which are and, and these are a huge range uh, as you can see from here from here is uh, arts groups uh, uh, men's shed gardening and so on um, and uh, you might include psychological therapies uh, and befriending as well so um, so this is uh, just to give you a flair what social prescribing actually is uh, so uh, next slide really is about uh, what, what is the kind of evidence uh, uh, so far that I could uh, look at uh, uh, around lonely and social isolation, also mental health. So, um, uh, as I said, the, the, the vast majority of social prescribing schemes support people with uh, loneliness and social isolation. They tend to be actually uh, the elderly, uh, traditionally, but uh, now things are changing um, as, as social prescribing develops. Um, the, the, there are some key documents here that I would like to, to kind of, one is the systematic review by uh, Bickerdijk um, and really um, uh, looked at uh, about 340 documents uh, and, and, uh, and they uh, you know, kind of identified 15 evaluation which were rigorous enough. So the, 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 this, basically this evaluation tell us that um, 
the, the improvement in, uh, in uh, especially mental health um, and well-being um, in general. Um, but there are, of course, uh, issues uh, with uh, sample size, uh, lack of a control group, um, and also a lack of uh, uh, follow-up over the six months uh, period. Um, so there's a way, some way to go uh, in terms of providing uh, rigorous uh, evidence. Uh, having said that, after 2018, when the Bigger Dyke uh, uh, was published, uh, there have been uh, some other studies. One is a, a, a cluster uh, randomized control trial um, uh, in uh, uh, Glasgow, uh, and uh, that has showed that um, statistical reduction in uh, anxiety and depression uh, for those uh, patients who, has, uh, who attend at least three or more sessions uh, with uh, a community link practitioner, which basically is a, a, a link worker. Um, this study is possibly, uh, well, is one of the few studies, if not the only study, who's uh, randomized. Uh, however, there are issues with, uh, uh, with, uh, with, their, uh, with the comparison group, um, which I can go into detail later, perhaps. So then uh, there is uh, this uh, uh, other study looked at, uh, uh, which looked at uh, increased uh, social connectedness um, and found uh, improved, improved improvements, uh, significant improvements in uh, social networks as a result of social prescribing. Um, uh, and also an interesting study to look at. Um, and, uh, and then this uh, about social capital, uh, which is actually a realist uh, review um, and, and, and which picked up on basically improvements in trust and sense of belonging as a result of social prescribing. So, and uh, I mean, uh, one of the things that come out also is that, of course, the, what uh, others have said, and even the, the speaker before me, uh, Kath uh, Haslam, about, uh, um, about uh, the link between social isolation uh, and, uh, uh, and mental health and depression in particular uh, is quite, uh, is quite uh, considerable even in social prescribing evaluations. Um, apologies. So, um, um, uh, yeah, and, and to, to just look at, uh, for example, one uh, existing evaluation, which um, is led by my colleague, uh, Caroline Frostick, uh, is the colleague of Red, um, is um, the evaluation of Redbridge uh, social prescribing. And that's a quite interesting evaluation because it focuses on social isolation and loneliness and also as a, in a particular uh, model, uh, to, uh, which I can explain uh, in a minute in the next slide. Um, but uh, and, and extreme loneliness uh, doesn't concentrate on, on, on a very old population, but also but actually starts at the age of 45. So start much earlier than perhaps, is, perhaps uh, one might expect. Um, and also the final point perhaps uh, around the evaluation of social prescribing is that there isn't a separation between social isolation and loneliness, which is, I'm sure you know better than I do, uh, the two concepts are very different uh, and, and they deserve uh, to, to kind of be treated in a different way. So um, then uh, I, what I looked at uh, um, is the, what might be the, 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 the kind of um, uh, some overlaps or points in common between social prescribing and, and studies and interven intervention on social isolation and loneliness. So I, I looked at really uh, the, the, the kind of um, the evidence on, on what, what is the intervention that tackles social isolation and loneliness. Um, and uh, really um, uh, looking at uh, gr group interaction, the, 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 there isn't, doesn't seem to be a real agreement between uh, what is if is group interaction or one-to-one or -one support uh, that are prevalent uh, as, as a way of uh, tackling or uh, tackling to, uh, social isolation uh, uh, and loneliness. Uh, so, so basically, this study say different things, and I wanted to say basically here that social prescribing can provide uh, flexibility in that respect. So the link worker can provide a one-to-one -one interaction with uh, uh, with um, um, a patient or a user. Uh, but also, of course, there is a, a, a referral to an activity uh, in the voluntary sector. So uh, that activity is normally uh, done in a group setting. So you can provide those two uh, types of intervention. Um, and and uh, perhaps the, also, the most important thing is also that GP practices uh, are quite well placed uh, in, in terms of identifying um, uh, those people who are at risk of uh, loneliness and social isolation. 
Um, and, and this is particularly, has been particularly interesting around, uh, uh, currently, uh, around not uh, COVID, because um, although uh, before, because before uh, GP practices, uh, GPs would refer uh, patients to uh, uh, link workers, but now um, the um, uh, GP practice provide uh, their database and share their database with link workers, One so they can. Actually. Okay, thanks. Uh, so they can uh, um, uh, um, identify uh, people who are really at um, uh, risk of loneliness uh, from the uh, from data, GP practices databases. Uh, that offers a bit more uh, targeted uh, uh, support, um, I should say. Um, next and last um, is um, so that basically uh, the conclusion conclusion is, is that uh, uh, social prescribing uh, for me I mean I've been involved in this for five years now and really um, it builds a social networks uh, that's what it does essentially uh, and obviously the, the 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 role of the link worker is key um, and uh, it offers this stepped approach so both the flexibility to uh, over one-to-one -one, uh, support, but also over group support. Uh, there, there needs to be done a lot more, uh, and I concentrate on this, perhaps this part, uh, the, the research gaps. Um, there, is, there needs to be uh, done a lot more done on around observation uh, of the, especially the of the conversation between the link worker and the service user. There is currently very not, not much evidence uh, around this particular uh, aspect in social prescribing. Um, uh, and um, um, uh, the early population, yeah, there are of course uh, not just, but this is, you already know about this, the, the elderly population is not just, uh, is one of the groups, but there are many others who experience social isolation and loneliness. Young people is uh, perhaps uh, an, inter an interesting group as well. Um, uh, are benefits sustained? Uh, that's the other question. Uh, I think uh, there is little evidence uh, beyond the 12 months and again, a long-term study would be needed here. Um, and uh, finally, um, is the types of activities that could be interesting to look at? What, what kind of activities might help uh, my, people might benefit the most from uh, uh, social, um, f f to tackle social isolation and, and loneliness? And I'll uh, stop here, <laughs> maybe too fast. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much, Marcello. Anybody on the chat have got any questions for Marcello? I wondered, may I ask a question, which was really about the acceptability of social prescribing to different groups defined by age and ethnicity? Uh, the acceptability? Mm. Um, in, what do you mean by acceptability? So in, in terms of if if people have a, a narrow view of going to their GP and getting a prescription or something like that, what, what do they think about a shift in, in, in what they're getting and thinking much more widely? Yeah, I mean, uh, um, well, uh, is the, the patient, yes, certainly uh, is. Uh, the, 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 fact, the, the thing is with, with, uh, with GP, GPs uh, are often quite instrumental uh, in, in referring the patient. So essentially what, what I mean is G, uh, patient listen to, uh, to the GP um, and, and so they, uh, there is a kind of an attrition of about 20% uh, generally uh, okay. from, from the GP to, uh, to, to uh, a link worker. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's the link worker that really has, has, uh, has a, a lot to do really with um, uh, with the, um, convincing the, the, the yeah. patient that uh, the community activities are uh, important. Yeah. And we've <laughs> got a question from um, Sophie Franzen. No, hang on. Sorry. It's, it's from Michael Cunliffe. Um, no, Caroline Gooch has asked, do people refer themselves into the Redbridge program or is it by GP referral only? It is by uh, GP uh, referral only. Uh, so far, uh, mm -hmm. and now it covers the whole of Red Bridge, and um, they refer they refer themselves. Uh, the GP refers the the, the patient, um, and then the patient is uh, basically uh, the, the the link worker in in in, in Red Bridge is called a well being buddy. Uh, the well being buddy uh, is contacting uh, the patient, uh, going to their house, 
um, uh, and uh, talking to them, uh, uh, providing sessions depending on their need. Mm. It could be one session or five sessions. Um, and then once they figure it out together, the patient and the uh, uh, link worker, what to do, uh, they also uh, go with them to the activity, uh, maybe once or twice, depending on, on the need. Um, uh, so there is quite an in-depth uh, model. Uh, yeah, in and, and, and yeah. Marcello, very quickly, also from another question related to that, whether non-GP clinicians like primary care nurses can refer into it? Yeah, um, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, it's primarily GPs, but uh, uh, in, in, a, in a GP practice, uh, it could be a nurse um, uh, and it could be sometimes uh, there are models of prescribing where, where the receptionist uh, uh, also refers people um, and also as I said at the beginning maybe I was too fast um, uh, the, there are now uh, other referral sources of social prescribing particularly uh, local authorities uh, and, and uh, other than social services within local authorities um, and also secondary care there are some examples of secondary care and hospitals which uh, uh, have uh, adopted social prescribing. Mm. Now we'll have to end it there, but there are some really interesting questions in the chat, Marcello, that you might be able to respond to, including one from Michael Cunliffe about arts versus um, other interventions that are prescribed through so social prescribing. 